Hey gang, Scott here. Skylum released Luminar Neo and one of the new tools is Relight AI. And that's what this video is about to explain what this tool is doing, show you a couple of examples uh, where I find that it's uh, working pretty well. And uh, there's at least one caveat that I have to share about the tool. Uh, if you're looking for more general information about Luminar Neo the overall, thoughts and uh, you know opinions and uh, things about the product. I've got a different video posting about that. Link is in the show notes. There'll be something popping up here on the screen to point you to that. So if you're looking for a broader overview of Neo, check that out. This video is just about the Relight AI tool. And let me start by just doing this with example. I like to work through example here. Uh, this is one of the sample photos that comes with uh, Luminar Neo. And it's a great one to look at for Relight because I I think this is one of the types of genres, you know, uh, photography where Relay really helps portrait, right? So Relay AI, it's in the creative group. And let me expand all the tools here. Just get this open up here. Now uh, we have main controls. We have brightness and we have warmth and they work near and far. And that's where the AI comes in. The AI is supposed to figure out, well, what's close to the camera, what's far away from the camera. And in a scene like this, well, the portrait, the model is close to the camera and things on the uh, the, the back end, those are like, you know, farther away. So uh, the way that I like to kind of explain how this tool is working, let's take brightness far. So stuff that's far away will make really, really, really dark. And stuff that's near will make really, really, really bright. And then you can control the depth. Well, do you want complete separation? And notice the haloing that starts to happen, right? And there is a halo control where you're saying the brightness of things that are far, and I want a shallow depth of field or you know, a shallower perceived depth of field versus I want more things to be uh, considered closer to the camera. And of course, with any tool, when you push things around, you can create these artifacts. We have that D-halo. You'll see that effect like around her ha hairline right now. With all that understood, we can control near, far, depth. In in reality, you know, how, how does this work and how would we use this? You know, we would take the brightness up to perhaps bring a little more brightness to our subject. And we could also adjust the warmth. Again, I'll push the warmth really far, pull it back. You get the idea here. Maybe she is a little warmer. Things in the background are a little cooler before and after. That is a, a very nice effect. I found that I do need to be uh, gentle on the sliders. You saw as I was explaining how the tool and how the sliders work, you can really create some uh, pretty nasty looking artifacts there. You know, like any tool, you push it too far, you push it beyond what makes sense for a particular scene, you're going to see you know, odd things. We, you know, we've done that uh, with contrast tools for years. We push them too far, we get halos. The same thing can happen with Relight. But uh, the controls are, are, are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. And the, the depth slider is quite interesting, right? Even you know, saying, oh, let's take the depth less and have her come forward even a little bit more on, the, on, that, uh, on that frame there, you know, before and after. And it really just has her, her jump forward there, and it's just one, one tool. Now, uh, I want to show you a second example of Relight, this time with a landscape. Uh, so it does work similarly, uh, but there's like a little bit of uh, like um, I, I consider it a problem with the tools, but something that if you're aware of it, you can manage. Uh, and uh, let me just explain that with this example. All right, here is our landscape. Let's open up Relight AI and let's have all of our controls open. And I'll do the same thing I did before. I took brightness down really far, or sorry, brightness far very dark and brightness near very bright. So you can see the transition line. Now as I move depth, right, we have that interestingly like semi-curved line. It's not quite if I can I don't know if I can make that as crisp as possible there. But it's um it's not quite straight and as we change things it starts to you know move into the background. Uh, this is where I think we have like kind of a, a problem is notice that as I get the depth to the maximum, areas of the sky are actually starting to brighten up. 
And that's where I don't think the tool quite makes sense. You know, for something that's that far away in the scene, and I'm trying to do a little bit of relighting here, uh, my sky is not going to change color or change tone or change warmth because of that. So uh, really, it's it's something to be aware of. And I'm, I'm making this um, you know, very dramatic change because of how I have these sliders set. But you know, as I as I fade this back out to something that might be a little more normal, where I'm adding a little bit of brightness and a little bit of darkness back in the uh, in the the background, I might even warm up the foreground a little bit. You can even cool the background. Like a traditional cool the background makes it retreat from our eyes, warm the foreground that becomes forward to our eyes, and then and then play around with the depth until we get something that we like before and after, right? I think I might be a little bit heavy-handed on that darkness. I might darken the uh, the sky in a slightly different way before and after. It is a useful tool. It is um, it is quite interesting, uh, but you do need to pay attention to where that transition happens because if you are a little too aggressive with the sliders, you may start affecting the the skyline. I mean, let me show that one more time. Right, brightness down, darkness up in the uh, the background and see that it starts to breach above the horizon and you've really got to push those sliders pretty far to get there but it can happen so be aware of that when you're using this on your landscape photos so that you don't um, do something that would end up being unnatural but that's Relight AI, and it, it is it is quite interesting. You know, could you do this with other tools, with gradients and with you know warmth or exposure sliders? Of course, you know, of course that works. We've been doing that for years. Uh, the, the point is to make it faster and easier, and that's what they've done with this Relight AI. Uh, thinking about this landscape example, you know, kind of easy to do that with a traditional gradient. What we saw with the portrait, mm, less so. Maybe with some of the newer masking tools that are coming along where you create the mask and it detects the subject and then you take another one and create a mask and invert it. And, but I didn't have to do any of those things. That's kind of the point of the AI tool. It's figuring those things out for you and doing all that under the hood so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so, But that's, that's Relate AI. I think it's interesting. I think it has potential. Um, I think at least on the, uh, the the couple of examples I've used here in this video and the other tinkering I've done um, with subtle touches on landscapes but I think where you have a human element in the scene that's where Relight does uh, really sing. So I hope you found this video useful informative. If you have other questions go ahead and drop them below and until next time my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.